All right guys, I'll put up a picture here of what we're dealing with again. Yet another fire. Uh, it's, this is the second one in two years. Uh, the last one we were gone for eight days on evacuation. This one's now a mile and a half from the house. The last one was 400 yards from the house. So um, it started yesterday. I'll show this picture behind us. That's the, the smoke plume just on the other side of the ridge. Um, last night when we went to bed, it was three miles west of us and this morning it's one and a half miles what 37 knots yesterday during the fire it started and has spread to uh, 15,000 acres since 3 p.m yesterday it's 7 30 this morning it crossed the barrier of a, a river last night and is on our side of the river now and so the ridge behind our house right there is that's basically the barrier at this point they've evacuated just on the other side of that hill and the roads are all closed just south of us. So the reason I bring this up is because I'm trying to figure out what to do about the airplane. Um, I recommend what I've done is get builder's insurance. So it is covered for a value, uh, probably undervalued at the moment, but considering how close it is to being done, I, I don't know if I could bear losing this project to a fire. So it's got me thinking about what, you know, what I could do to be better prepared for this situation. And right now, you know, I don't, I really don't know what I could do with it other than move it to the airport, which would never get any work done on it because it'd be away from the house. So anyway, yet another obstacle in the build. Um, another reason to get it done and get it out of here is get it away from this, this uh, seems to be a magnet for fires. Anyway, that's just another, another obstacle in the build and what we're dealing with here. All right, so getting back to the project, had to take a little break because we had a fire again real close and we we're getting ready to evacuate. Luckily, it's uh, died down. Came within about a mile and a half of the house. Um, but we're good. Uh, I was a little panicked about what to do with this because I couldn't find an enclosed trailer that would work for it. Um, I was gonna have to flatbed it and in its current state, their parts would have fallen off everywhere. So anyway, hopefully that's over with. So back to work on the plane. Um, I already found a home for the coolant reservoir and I did pick up a mor moroso, I think that's how you say it. And it's gonna go right up here. And uh, I do have to weld in new um, fittings for that because these aren't the right ones for my coolant line. So I gotta do some aluminum welding there, get that part ready to go. It's gonna go right up there, tie into the thermostat, down radiator's gonna be down in this area somewhere. And there's the radio radiator there. And um, I believe it's just a 914 radiator. I got that from Steve Henry from Wild West Aircraft. Um, the only thing is, I think he may have had the inlet and outlets slightly modified for the way this application works. But anyway, that's the radiator. I've mounted up the radiator. And this was one I really struggled with because the positioning of the radiator is completely arbitrary because this installation's never been done. So you can put it anywhere you want. Um, and that actually having the option to put it anywhere, it was difficult to decide on a, a certain spot. So I tried to work with the cowling that I, pieces that I'm gonna use. This will stick out the bottom of, a cow, of the cowling like a, basically like a Model 4. So positioning it forward and aft was really the decision I needed to make and then how far up I could push it with the engine mount. Um, so where it sits right now is hopefully where it will stay. Um, I've got a mount that runs from the radiator up to the engine mount uh, in the back and then two in the front that run up to Adele clamps around the bars. Um, it's real sturdy that way. I think that's gonna do the job. We'll, we'll 
have to see if that creates any problems with vibration when it's running. Um, not real sure about that yet. We'll, we'll have to, you know, part of the testing process will be testing to see if we have vibration issues. So <clears throat> as far as the plumbing on that goes, we've got the, the uh, coolant coming out from the bottom of the engine. It comes to this T because when the uh, thermostat is not open, it's going to allow the coolant to uh, bypass the radiator to get you warmed up. So we come out to the T, go up to the bottom of the radiator, and then out of the top of the head, this is where it's going to recirculate, and it's going to come out the other side of the thermostat into the reservoir, then it will come out of the bottom of the reservoir and down to the radiator. Um, so I have a couple parts I'm waiting on for that. I did get this uh, 180 degree bend that I needed to go in there. And then I've got to weld some uh, one inch barbs into the coolant reservoir. And then this line here is half inch and it comes off of the, uh, this is the, called a heat exchanger. It's basically the oil cooler. You got oil running inside, cooling on the outside. So heat exchanger fluid comes back up and it goes into the the uh, thermostat right here. So that's going to be the line that I use for the heater. So that's what this line's for. It's going to go through the wall of the firewall into the heater core and then come back out and then go to that barb. So I've got a couple of firewall pass-through fittings um, for that one inch barb. And that's going to come around inside here. I've got a heater core that's going to mount right in here. And uh, I didn't use the Rotex heater core. And I'll get into more of that when that one I ordered shows up. It's a pretty cool unit and it's four pounds lighter than uh, what the uh, Rotex setup is. So it might be something that can be um, used on really any engine with a coolant system. But um, the overall weight was going to be a huge advantage on that heater core. It has the fan and everything uh, included in it. And it was quite a bit cheaper than going the Rotax route. So anyway, so that's an update on the, the radiator mount and the coolant system that's coming along slowly. Just waiting on some parts. I want that engine mount or that heater to show up so that I can go ahead and plumb everything for that. All right, so what I'm using for the oil, or sorry, the coolant reservoir is this Moroso uh, coolant reservoir. It's just a one, it's the basic one from uh, Summit Racing. I think that's where I got it. And then I've got a, you know, a, a radiator cap for it. The outlet and inlet for it were the wrong size and in the wrong position. Um, the outlet will still be used in case <clears throat> I ever need to drain it. But... I went and got these weldable one inch barbed bungs and then drilled out a hole in it and those are going to be welded in. Hopefully it's going to look like that when I'm done. Um, so this leads me to another subject. Um, there's two ways to handle this. I could take this down to a friend and have them weld it for me. Um, but that's not what this project's about. This project is about learning how to do this stuff. And I've done a fair amount of welding. I just have done very little aluminum welding. And I bought a welder about a year ago, specifically to do aluminum welding for this project. And I've been practicing a little bit, at not devoted to it enough yet. Um, and I'm really not happy with where, where my aluminum welding skills are yet. So I'm not gonna bust out and start burning holes in this nice reservoir until I've got the skill. So I've got a couple extra and some extra aluminum. So I'm gonna be practicing my, my bung welding technique until I get a result that will look like the ones that are coming from the factory. And if I can't get there on my own, then I will, I will have someone weld those for me for now. But really the goal of this project is to build it all yourself and learn everything that goes into the process of, of, of doing that. Next up off on the engine project will be the uh, oil system. So I've got the reservoir sitting over there on the bench right there um, that can fit in here i'm still trying to come up with a custom one um, that i i may end up welding one up to go in this area here but it kind of depends on how the air box is going to fit up and i still don't have a solution for the air box um, 
at some point I will devote all my attention to that. Here's my heater core right here. I went ahead and mounted it up and it's got four outlets. So you can see these two here. There's two on the other side as well. I may plug one and then do a 90 degree turn to dump the heat down right here. And on the other side, have a heat dump down. And then the third one off the other side, I'm gonna bring up for a defrost uh, vent up on the uh, glare shield. So that'll help defrost the, uh, the windshield if that's necessary. It does have a fan on it. I've got a switch that I'm gonna put in the panel. It will be a variable speed. So you can go from you know, a little bit of heat to full blast. So that'd be kind of cool. Um, supposedly this puts out more BTUs than the Rotax heater core. Um, I'd be surprised if that's really true or not. I mean, it's a much smaller radiator, but um, according to the specs on this, um, this should do the job. We'll see. It is way lighter. Um, it saved me like four pounds over the, the uh, Rotax one and it was quite a bit less expensive. So I'll try to find the link. It is out of the UK. It was, uh, uh, there's nothing like it in the US. Um, it's made for custom uh, car builds, race cars, that you wanna have a heater function in with a quiet fan heater system. So um, that's what I came up with. It's actually a T7 design thermal solutions is what it is. So um, where, that hooks in right now it has these little um a and six stems coming out the bottom i ordered some 90 degrees for that so i can come out and do a 90 degree and then i've got one of the firewall pass-throughs going right here so it's going to come out and connect to that and then i've got to put another one i'm waiting to decide where that other one's going to come through and that's what led me into going ahead and mounting the oil reservoir which I've been agonizing over whether to make a custom one or not. Um, I finally got this one positioned so that a couple things you got to keep in mind. Your low point on the engine, you want the reservoir above that. So there was a nice space down here, but it would have put the outlet of the oil reservoir below the engine, which means you would leave a bunch of oil unusable inside of the uh, inside the reservoir. So um, what really made it difficult is one the shape of the of the stock apex oil reservoir is just it's specifically made for the snowmobile um, i'm limited on height for the cowling and out to the side for the cowling again and then this one bar on the engine mount um, if i could have eliminated this or done something different where i come in sh shorter or something allowed me to put the reservoir in that area Maybe I would have messed around with that. But I think what I came up with is actually pretty good. Come up here on the ladder. Um, it's super sturdy where it is. I've got one Adele clamp on the bottom. All this comes off because I got it taped off right now. But And then I just did some brackets. So it's all isolated with rubber. Um, I was going to weld stuff on, but I actually may end up doing a custom tank at some time, some point. So I didn't want to weld to the frame. There's one point that's a little tight here that I'm going to grind out so it doesn't touch the frame. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. Um, and then it's real close here, but it doesn't touch. So with three contact points, it's really sturdy. It's not going to not going to rub. And I think that's going to work real good as far as clearance goes. All right. So the oil reservoir is mounted permanently. Hello, any chafe emergency tape under here it's uh the stuff that sticks to itself only it's a good insulating tape doesn't get all sticky that's just on there just to prevent any sort of uh interference with the reservoir and the engine mount it's nice in there snug you use three adele clamps you can actually move the whole aircraft with it it's very sturdy now i've been pretty uh pretty tuned out from the project with the fire and everything going on. It's been kind of hard to re-engage. Today's been good. Uh, it's my first day off of seven for, from work and I'm diving back into it and it's always hard to re-engage. And that's another, you know, I said, try to do something every day. That way you, you know where you left off. It's like reading a book. If you set it down for two or three weeks, it's really hard to go back to that book and remember what's going on. Um, so, 
anyway i'm jumping back in trying to get the motivation going um for you know i don't think any of you guys know but i did sell my model 5 um which is really difficult for me to to say goodbye to that plane i've had it for uh, uh 14 years and it's basically got me into so much as far as what aviation has to offer i made so many friends because of that airplane and because of the trips i've gone on and the type of flying we do and being part of the kit fox community because of that airplane i've made a ton of friends and i've got into you know basically making these videos where all of you guys get to see what's going on with this project so right now i'm grounded <laughs> i've got no wings so that's even more motivation to get this going i'm gonna wrap this episode up here with a little tribute to my model 5 uh, really sad to see it go uh, some of these pictures will show the evolution that it has made since the day I purchased it back in I think it was 2005 or 6 and all the modifications that I've done to it and all the good times I've had in this plane a lot of a lot of friends and and uh, a lot of adventures it's been really a wonderful experience to own this airplane I am looking forward to getting into the series 7 and continuing those adventures and making new friends along the way uh, so follow along here with the little slideshow I've got here at the end if you guys want. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to start getting into the cowling. You told me I'm your anchor. I told you you're my pole. Through the wind and fire we try to hold on. We build this ship together, searching for a home. Despite the storm that hit us, we're still on board. Dancing in the moonlight, the world just stop and stares. We got no destination, I'll take you anywhere. All the doors we've opened, and all the books we've closed. Words just come together, story that we never told. So far is shaking for my own. You said just keep. Captain.